Hi guys, today I'll be showing you how I make my videos. This has been a quite highly requested video. So here it finally is after a really long time. So first of all, to start off, you need to be somewhere comfortable because this is going to take a long time. And I am on my bed because this is where I feel the most comfortable. And also, don't forget your H2O and a dog to keep you company. I also want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. More details about them will be at the end. And moving on, to answer a really commonly asked question, what do you use to film? I normally use my Canon G7X. And sometimes when I'm really lazy, I like to use my phone. And that's what I use to film some portions of my vlogs when I'm very lazy to grab my camera. To edit, I use my MacBook Pro here. It's a 15 inch, honestly, it's too big. The editing software that I use is Final Cut Pro. Um, there's also Adobe Premiere Pro, but you have to pay that monthly. And Final Cut is just one payment of $300, which I honestly think is more worth it. I also use a Wacom tablet for editing, but I'll get to that part later. So now that I am done with the basics, I will take you guys through my editing process. And normally I take like three to 10 hours to edit each video. It really depends on my mood. If I am productive, I will edit something through a span of a week. So it won't take that long in one sitting but honestly yeah that's not me i just do everything in one sitting which is why it takes so long so i have my laptop here and what i do first is i import all my clips from my sd card onto final cut or for my phone i airdrop all the files and right now i already have a new library made i make a new library for each project i have and we're just gonna title this new project Ha ha ha, because I am using all these clips from November, I think. And now you have the project timeline in here, and you can just put all the clips you want for this video in here. So you just drag it down. Ha ha, I am so ugly. This is me. Uh, yeah, just, that's me posing for a thumbnail. Alright, so obviously this is not how short a video would be, but I'm just showing you guys what I would do. So once you have everything in, I just cut them to my liking. I either use the blade tool, which is B, or I drag it in out, depending on which part I want. So see this clip where I am setting up my camera and walking into frame to pose for this? I would obviously delete that, delete. Sometimes I also like to add in black frames for the aesthetics, so you just go to generators and you add in a custom frame. I place it here, I'll make it a little bit shorter, maybe one here for the end. So now that this is all done, I like to add in text. So basically I just get a basic title, drag it in, and then for text, I like to use Avner Next in like bold, demi-bold, italic, whatever, depending on my mood. So let's name this I Love Art. And then I'm gonna change this to Avner Next. And let's do a demi bold italic for this one. You can also change the color and such to fit your background, but now you can just drag it around. Haha, <laughs> let's put it right here. You can also change the size. And I also like to fuck with the tracking because, wow, look, look. And for those people that like to have a bit of a vintage vibe, you can also do this with the same font and then just go down to face which is where you change the color you can change it to yellow and you can outline it too to have like a black outline or whatever colored outline you like so here i love art i also like to handwrite my text and this is where the wacom tablet comes in i have a cintiq 13 hd here and this is where i like to draw on you can honestly use like an ipad for this but i like to use a tablet to help me all right, so to hammer my text, I like to pull up Photoshop. And you want to make your file 1920 by 1080 because that's how big your video is. Normally for my anime text, I make three layers. So I can make each one like three seconds long and then speed it through and repeat it. So one, layer one, layer two, layer three, and then let's write food. So if I write food, it would be like this for the first one. Food, and then I like to add these little stars around it. So in order to make it look animated, you want each layer to look a bit different from the other one. So to do that, I like to make layer one a bit less in opacity. And then, so now I can see it. And then moving on to layer two, you like do the little stars a bit further away. And then you just rewrite the font a bit 
differently. And then the same goes for the next layer. You bring back each one to full opacity. Now you can save each layer by itself. So to do that, you want to make everything transparent. So you delete the background. Now you can save it as a separate file for each one. And I save it as a GIF file. And let's call this layer one. Normally I would just type something in randomly, but let's not do that. And you do that for the next two layers. Now that you have all three layers saved, you can drag all three layers here into final cut change the duration of each one to like say five seconds and then drag them each over here to make the animation longer you just copy and paste each one and i just do this a few times so it'll be longer so once you play it now it looks like this Alrighty, so that's mostly it for the handwritten text um normally when i'm in a time crunch for editing i'll just use like a regular text but if I have the time, I try to put in an animated text or just a handwritten text in general. For those that were wondering how you create the borders for a video, you just put in a custom generator and you can change the color to, um, let's do light blue this time. And then you place the video that you want it to be on over it. And you can just change the size of this. And for my videos, I also like to include glitch effects. I have this glitch pack called M Glitch that I downloaded. I will link it below. So this is something the pack gives you. And then normally for my videos, I like to add a black frame at the end so it fades out. And then I'll just place an M Glitch transition into it. I like to choose this rainbowy looking one. See, this is what it does. In my past videos, I also like to put film grain into my video so for that final cut actually has a installed effect and you can just drag it in it's called film grain onto your video and i like to change it to realistic grain and then you can just up or like decrease the amount of grain you want in your video after i have all this done i like to color correct i used to color correct each single clip which took a really really long time but now <laughs> Now that um, I am trying to save time, not that I'm lazy, I like to place everything in a compound clip or two, and I like to just color correct the whole thing. Creating compound clips makes life so much easier. Now that you have the whole clip here, I can just color correct it. I used to like this like pinky tint over all my videos, but now I don't really do that. I don't really change anything in exposure or saturation unless I have to. But what I normally do is in color, I like to make this a little bit orangey, just a little. And then on the highlight side, I make this a little pink. And that's what I do for my whole video. So now that I'm done color correcting, all that is left to do is music. And I normally get my music from SoundCloud. I'm kind of bad at creating SoundCloud artists. I'm working on that, I swear. I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, but I've been interchanging the same two songs in my videos. I have been using these two songs called Clean and Ice Talk. But normally when I'm trying to find new music, I just go to SoundCloud. And there's this YouTuber that I really like. Her name is Joyce Bean. Please notice me. But she has a few playlists and I like to choose songs from her background playlist. There's a bunch to choose from or just other playlists that she has. So I just choose a song from here and then download it and then place it into the audio track in the timeline. So now that I have the audio file placed in, since I'm talking in the video, I will normally change the decibels to between negative 25 and negative 35 so I can hear myself talk. And if the song is too short, I will normally copy it and then paste it at the end instead of finding a new song because I just like the same melody flowing, you know? And then at the end of the video, I like to fade the song out. So I'll just move this bar over here and drag it over around here so it'll fade, slowly fade out. So now I am done editing my video. All that's left to do is to export. Honestly, you should probably rewatch the video a bit before you export it. But by this time, I am so done with watching myself. I just export it and pray for the best. So I export it as a Apple Progress 422 LT file. It is much smaller than the source file, which is an Apple Progress 422. And it also takes much less time to export. With this done, now I upload it onto YouTube and I hope that it doesn't get demonetized. To make my thumbnails for YouTube, I use Photoshop to create them. And a normal image size for a thumbnail is 1280 by 720 i believe and for my thumbnails i usually just screenshot a picture from the video or i choose a picture from around the time of the video 
and I just placed it in to Photoshop. So now that this is in, you can change the size however you want. So now I have my picture in, I can move it around to however I want it to be. Say that I want it to be here. You have this huge gap over here. So what you want to do is rasterize this layer and then you want to select the portion that's missing, which is here. Right click and then fill the layer. To fill, you want to click on content aware and just click OK. And it'll look like this and you can just change it up a bit. So now that you have the picture, now you need the text. So for my thumbnail fonts, I like to use either After Next, Cooper Black, or I used to use Soap, but now I mainly use Cooper Black. This title is A Sample. Let's do white for this one. And then you can also fuck around with the tracking here. I have it set to 200. And then you can change the style. I usually use flag or wave. So for wave or arch or flag or whatever, I just fuck around with the settings here. I'll drag it to around the area I want it to be. And then you can command T, transform the text, widen it, shorten it, however you want. And now you're done creating your thumbnail. And you can just save as a JPEG and then place it in YouTube. So now I am done with my whole editing process. This is how I do every single video, basically. So again, I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So Squarespace is a site where you can create your own website for whatever you need. It's an all-in-one platform with domains, websites, marketing tools, and online stores. I am actually working on my own website right now, so stay tuned for that. Who knows which year it'll come out in. But they also have so many templates for you to choose from. If you need any help while you're making it, they also have a 24-7 customer support via live chat or email. So don't forget to check out squarespace.com. I also have a link that you can use down below in the description box and you can get one free trial and 10% off your first purchase. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you found it to be helpful and if you have any questions about editing or anything else don't forget to comment down below and honestly my boyfriend will probably reply to you faster than i will but i will still try to reply so i'll see you in the next video bye